<laughs> Hi, and welcome to Sunday with Mike. On today's show, we're going to revisit putting music on Facebook, dented microphone balls, ripped pants at an event, and a photographer crossing the line. Grab some coffee and join me. I'll be right back. So I've got my coffee and I hope you have yours. I want to take you back in time just a little bit. Facebook introduced a feature called Live, which allowed you to broadcast whatever you were doing and then your friends could comment on your live broadcast. So before too long, DJs and karaoke folks started doing live show feeds uh, of their events, but then within days, the posts were removed by Facebook. Then it got to the point where they were deleted almost right away. The reason that this was happening was because Facebook wasn't paying for the rights and royalties to stream music, and they didn't want to get sued by the music industry. Well, it's time to update this story. Facebook has started paying for streaming royalty rights, and you should be able to go back and start doing your live show feeds again. Of course, this is only my theory, but let's see what happens. So when you have a moment, I want you to test out a live feed with music playing at your gig, or you can do it at home as a test to see what happens. The test that I did in a private group with 45 seconds of a number one song current right now, uh, meant to be, uh, has been up for over 24 hours and not deleted as of yet. So crank up those live feeds again and start having fun with this feature once again. Be sure to give a nod to Facebook for paying the royalties because a platform as big as theirs is a pretty expensive ticket. Thanks, Facebook. DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Have you ever had a microphone that was dropped? I've had some legit accidents over the years and sometimes they just roll off the table or someone steps on a cord and it jerks it out of somebody's hand while they're walking, etc. Different things have happened over the years. So I wanna show you a typical handheld microphone. It doesn't have to be wireless, it could be anything. And a lot of them have these, these grills, these little balls on the top. They could also have some other sort of windscreen. It doesn't really matter what it is, but these things will get dented and this one was dented, and, uh, and now if you notice, it's nice and smooth again. And I'm gonna show you how to fix these uh, if this happens to any of your microphones. There's some tools that you're gonna need to do this, so I'm gonna show you what they are now. You're gonna need some slip joint pliers, right? The, uh, just like this, the, this curve is really important, and I'll show you why later. You're also gonna need uh, this uh, cleaning pad. We'll show you what it looks like. It's a Mr. Clean eraser, and then you're gonna need some disinfectant. So beyond all of that, uh, we're going to get started on this in just a moment because I got really lucky. One of my former DJs uh, was constantly dropping his microphone and he figured this out, uh, how to fix it. And he showed me many years ago, and now I'm going to share this trick with you today. So beyond those things that we've talked about, the tools, um, the curve the reason that this curve is so important on the slip joint pliers is because it works really well for getting inside of this ball. So let me get started. I'm going to unscrew it. It just, uh, you turn it and it separates. <clears throat> All right. So now inside of this ball is some foam, right? And so in addition to the, the, uh, the grill, which breaks up your voice 
uh, to try to eliminate the popping peas and stuff. There's some foam inside. If you're careful, you can leave the foam in there because it's really a pain to take it out and put it back in. But uh, if you want to really make sure that you're safe, take that out before you get started. And then the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to take these pliers and you're going to turn them upside down like that. And then you're going to take the ball and you're going to put it wherever we'll say this is the one I'm going to use. And let's say my dent is right there. So I'm going to put these two together. And then now I'm going to put the pliers on a counter or a piece of wood. And I'm going to push down gently and, and, and firmly. And then I'm going to take it out and I'm going to look at it and see what I do. And then you just keep working it with just one end of these pliers until it's completely gone like this one. Once you do that, the next thing you want to do is I'm happy with the results. So now while I've got it off, I want to clean it. Uh, we're always speaking into this thing. We let other people speak into it. And uh, so why not clean it up a little bit? So we're going to show you the slide of what the Mr. Clean Eraser looks like at the store. And so you take that, just come back to me, and then you're going to just scrub this down, right? So you give it a good scrub, clean it up, and then the next thing you want to do is take it off to the side and spray it with some kind of a disinfectant. I'm using Lysol. Let that dry, and then you'll screw it back onto your microphone. And here's the most important tip of all. Test it before you need it. Make sure you test this out uh, since you've taken it apart. We want to make sure that there's no accidental, uh-oh, it doesn't work, and now somebody's got it in their hand. Uh, at an event for a toast or something. So be sure to test it before you give it back to a client or count on it for any reason at all. I'll be right back. So many DJs go to their events in casual wear and then they change into their event clothes after they've completed their load ins. I used to be one of those guys too. And then one day I was doing a load in during a heavy duty rainstorm and I had my grubby tennis shoes on that I do yard work in because I didn't want to mess up my good ones, get them all muddy and everything. So then when it came time for me to get dressed, uh oh, no dress shoes. I forgot them at home and I'm 20 miles away, so I had to make a mad dash to Walmart, run through the store like a madman to buy some dress shoes way in the back of the store, run all the way to the front counter, hurry up and get back to my event before the bride and groom arrived to be introduced. It was an experience that I never ever want to recreate and have to go through again. So going forward, I would always leave my house fully dressed, ready to go, minus my coat. Sometimes I'll leave off my tie, but usually I have it on. The other day I was talking to another DJ and he prefers to change at the event after his load in is finished. And it's a good thing too, because he went through a bushy area uh, to uh, plug in his AC cord for the ceremony. Maybe he was undoing it. But in either case, as he was heading out of the bushes, his pants got ripped by a sticker bush. He said that it was torn all the way down the leg. He switched back to his blue jeans and then had to explain to the bride why he was wearing blue jeans to a formal wedding. His story started making me think about this in a new light. At least he had jeans to switch back into. If this had happened to me, I would be in trouble. While I do have a sewing kit in my emergency backup stuff, I don't have an extra pair of pants with me. So he asked me to share his story with all of you so that you could work out your own backup plan for your pants and shirts, etc. in case anything like this ever happened to you. In addition to what happened to him, what would you do if you had to change a flat tire on the way to an event? So for me, it's time to put some extra clothes in my SUV. I hope you'll do the same. photographer at a recent wedding decided to cross the line. I had never heard of this person before and we're going to call her Sally. So while we're in the ceremony area, Sally decided to move my live microphone from the podium without even asking me. 
if it was okay or, you know, whose is this or would you mind moving it or is it okay if I move it, even though I was right there in plain sight. The reason that she was moving it was because she didn't like the look of a wooden podium in the pictures, even though the officiant had requested it. How do I know this? Because I thought the same thing, and then I went inside and I asked the bride about it, and she said, no, we need to leave it because it was requested. Now, all of a sudden, 15 minutes later, it's being moved by the photographer without any concern for my wireless microphone that's just sitting on top of the podium so that the officiant could grab it and then hold it in her hand while she does the ceremony. So the ceremony is over, and now I want you to fast forward about 45 minutes into the cocktail hour of this very formal reception, which is unusual for us. We don't normally have that many. I was talking to the videographer and photographer when two different people came up to me about 30 seconds apart, one, and they were both saying the same thing. Hey, the bride and groom are ready to be introduced. Well, the photographer went into this rant mode saying that they were not supposed to be introduced until later in the night. Now, this doesn't make any sense to me. Why would you allow newlyweds to enter a full room full of guests and not introduce them? I mean, that's just bad etiquette. But I've been wrong before, so I did the smart thing and I went to go check with the newlyweds. So I go out to the hallway and my chat goes like this. Hey, I was told that you were ready to be introduced into the room. They say yes. I explain that for some unknown reason, the photographer is ranting that we aren't supposed to do this. The groom assures me that I'm right and please let's get on with it. So I leave and I go back to my DJ table. Well, on the way, I tell the videographer and the photographer the results. Hey, yes, they're coming in and yes, I will be introducing them. This is where I feel like the photographer totally crossed the line for my comfort level. Instead of just accepting what I had to say, she was still insisting that I was wrong and did I hear this directly from the bride? I looked at her and I said, I've already told you what we're going to be doing. She repeats herself and demands that I answer her question. Did I hear it directly from the bride? So at this point, I've had enough and I'm no longer interested in playing a nice guy. So keeping in mind that the bride and groom are still in the hallway waiting on me to introduce them while this photographer is trying to delay me. So I looked at Sally and I said, look, I have absolutely no intentions of answering to you all night long. I've already told you what I'm about to do. To which she replies, well, you don't have to be rude about it. I grabbed my microphone and I did what I needed to do by getting the bride and groom in the room. Later, hours later, the groom comes over to me and asks me if I'm okay. I said, sure, why? Why do you ask? And he says, well, you know, and then you guessed it. Sally went over and complained to the bride and groom that I was rude. Turns out that she's a family member who is absolutely clueless about wedding etiquette. She doesn't normally do weddings. She shoots babies and was doing this as a family favor. And so she felt entitled, but she was just absolutely clueless about weddings. The groom assured me that all was well with the couple, and we had a blast the rest of the night. So, by the way, guess who stayed as far away from me as possible? Yep, you're right, Sally. She never bothered me for the rest of the night. So why am I telling you this story? First of all, never ever step so far out of your own lane that you were hired to do to interfere with another vendor's job. Nothing I did affected her shutter and camera, but what she did affected my microphone and my duties. Secondly, I received an unsolicited five-star review from this couple within days of their wedding. So remember this, you can stand up for your clients, even if another vendor gets in your way and still come, on, come out on top with a five-star perfect review. That's going to be our show for today. I hope that you'll share the show with your friends. Give me your thoughts down in the comments section below and be sure to give us a thumbs up. We're saving a seat for you in the Sunday with Mike Facebook group and I hope you'll join us. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.